Hey guys, what's up? It's Steel Flavor here. And lately I've been getting a lot of questions asking about the programs I use to stream and also how to set up these programs. It's a lot easier to answer these questions through a video, so I decided to make one. I'm going to be using OBS Studio, which is a free program, and I will link their website in the description below. I won't be teaching you how to set up your OBS settings, but I will link some other videos that will help you guys with that. The programs that I'm going to show you how to use are Always on Top, Twitch Alerts, which is now called Streamlabs, Bot, which is what I use for the point system in my stream, and also Nightbot, which I use for sound requests and commands that my mods can use and also edit. I'll put timestamps for each of these programs in the description and also download links. Hopefully this tutorial is easy to follow, and please make sure to subscribe and leave a like. I'm going to start by showing you guys a really useful program called Always on Top. I don't think many people use this, but for me it makes things way easier to read chat. In order to download Always on Top and many other programs, you're going to need to download something that will unzip files, and I use WinRAR. It's a free download. It says that the trial will expire in 30 days, but it never really expires, so I'll leave the link to that in the description. Once you download WinRAR, you'll go to Always on Top, and then you'll scroll down and click on this link, which will download Always on Top. You see that it comes in a WinRAR file, or a zip file. Next, you're going to want to double click always on top, or you can click on it, extract, and put it to your desktop if you want to, and that way the file will always be on your desktop so it's easy to use and you won't have to open up the zip file again. Once you double click on it, you're going to go to your toolbar and you'll see that this logo is in your toolbar and that way you know that always on top is on and working. So I'm going to go back to my channel and I'm going to do the pop out chat. This is how I prefer to read my chat. Some people like to do it in the dashboard. This is just what I like to do. I think it's easy to look at and it's small and I can put it really wherever. Yeah, this is just my preference. You don't have to. So once your chat window is selected, you're going to do control space bar. And see, when you click on any other window, it will not come on top. That's what she said <laughs> of the chat window. Some people might not find this helpful, but I think it's extremely helpful, so I decided to just throw in the video anyway. Moving on, we're going to go to Streamlabs now, which is also known as Twitch Alerts. What you want to do is log in, connect with Twitch, and then authorize. Once you authorize Streamlabs, you're going to see your dashboard. This first page shows you your Twitch stats for your followers, your subscriber count, donation counts, donation amount, and even bits used. It's really helpful, and you can also see your recent events. There's a lot that Streamlabs can do, so let's start with the donation setting. You can link more than one donation method. For example, I have my PayPal and my credit card linked. You're going to fill out your information for whichever methods you want, and then we're going to go and look at settings. You can change all these settings, but for now, we're going to go to your page, right here, and you can change and customize your page. This is what people are going to see when they donate to you. I haven't linked any payment methods, so this is popping up for me, but once you're done customizing everything, you can copy this link and then put it in your panels tab on your Twitch page. Another cool feature that they recently added is a wishlist page. Click add a wishlist item and you can import links from Amazon and it will change the name, price, and also the picture will be added. So let's say you need an Astro headset, click copy, paste, import. Now the name and the picture have been added and also the price and you would save the item. How this works is a person would go to your donation page that we just created. Let's go to my actual one for an example and we'll go to my wish list and they would see that they're getting me a gift. If someone were to buy this item off of your Streamlabs wish list instead of your Amazon wish list, the alert will pop up on screen with a picture of the gift. They aren't actually ordering you the gift, they're sending you the money and you'd have to order it yourself. This is a neat way for someone's name to appear on the screen if they were to buy you something. Next is the donation goal, which is really easy to set up. Let's just say I want to go to MLG Vegas, which is a Call of Duty event. Say MLG Vegas, and I would put the goal amount to $500. Any amount zero, we'll say it ends November 30th and start donation goal. Once we've done the donation goal, we would click on donation goal widget, and we would change any options that we wanted. Um, I'm just going to do random stuff. We would save the settings. Cute. <laughs> and we would copy this link right here. Once you copy the link, you'll go to OBS Studios. You're going to click the plus button. Browser source. 
with a donation goal. This right here, we're going to change this URL into the one that we just copied and we're gonna paste it. We're gonna click OK. And as you can see, now you can see the donation goal and it will update by itself. So you don't have to worry about it. You can also update your donation goal here on the way it looks and it'll update automatically in OBS. So you don't have to re-copy the link and repaste it. Next, we're gonna get into the alert box. Once you're on this page, you can change any of these settings right here. This is all up to you, the layout, the alert delay, and everything. And once you've decided what you want those to be, you'll click on follows. And you can do follow alerts enabled or disabled. In this case, you want to do enabled and choose whichever one you want. You can change what it says is a rock star. I don't know. <laughs> and then we'll do bounce and you can even change this. You can upload an image or you can browse a gallery. So we'll just browse one. Look for a cute one. This one's cute. Go play. You can change the sound as well. You can upload a song if you want, or you can just, okay, these are all, this one's cute. And you can change the volume, alert duration, alert text delay. You can change the font settings if you want, but for time's sake, we're just gonna save this. So once you do the follow, you can also change your subscription donations and host and everything. Once you're done editing all of these, you'll copy this link and do what you did with the donation goal. Open up OBS. We'll add browser source. We'll call it alert. Paste. Okay. And now let's see if it works. Okay, it works. The last thing I'm going to show you is the event list. Uh, I really like the event list. It looks really clean on my overlay. It's not for everybody though. But what you do is basically the same thing that you did with other. You customize it however you want to. So once we finish customizing it, we'll copy, add, browser source, the event list, paste, OK. Let's see. Now for your actual stream, the boxes will stay there with the names, but because this is a test, they go away. Next, we're gonna be talking about Ankbot. First thing you wanna do to get Ankbot linked to your stream is you wanna create a new Twitch account. This Twitch account will be your bot. For example, mine is Flavabot. Once you've created that Twitch account, you're gonna click credentials, bot login. For the bot name, you're gonna put your bot's Twitch account name in this box. For the channel name, you're gonna put your actual streaming channel's account name. On your default browser, make sure you're logged into your bot Twitch's account. Once you're logged in, click generate OAuth token and a little alert will appear saying that it will open a URL. Click yes and make sure you're logged into your bot's Twitch account again. Once you're on that page, it'll give you an OAuth and you're going to copy it and paste it here. And then you're going to click connect. Next, you're going to go to your actual streaming channel's chat and you're going to want to mod that bot that you just created. So you're going to do slash mod bot name here. So put your bot name there. Once you do that, go to credentials, streamer login. Make sure you're logged into your actual streaming account again, and then click generate OAuth token and copy and paste it there again and click connect. And that's all you have to do to get Ankbot connected to your Twitch stream. So once you have your Twitch and your Twitch bot connected to Ankbot, you can finally set up your currency system, which is the main thing I use from Ankbot. So the currency system is a way that people can get points in your stream for watching or hosting or even just being in the channel when it's offline. It's all up to you. You can call it whatever you want. Mine are called Fruits. 
Um, you would do the command and it'd be whatever you want. You can get creative. They can be so you want to start adding ranks to your stream. So when someone automatically comes into my stream, they have zero points and they're a fruitcake. To help you get an understanding of it, I'll do an example right now. I'll do fruit stand. And I'll say the requirement is 10 points, so they're not a fruitcake for that one. Actually, I'll do 25, 25 points. I'll add the custom rank and they'll add there. And you can have as many ranks as you want. There might be a limit, but I have quite a bit of ranks, so I don't think you're ever going to reach the limit. So now you want to do your payout settings. So online payout interval would mean how many points you're getting for how th this many minutes. So this would be every five minutes you're going to get five points while you're live. Or, you know, two points every five minutes for being a follower and watching you. So they would get five for watching while you're live plus two more because you're following and then if they're hosting they get another 10 so that would be 17 points in all every five minutes so this is the points database that shows you anyone who has ever had a point in your stream since you've added onkbot to your stream so people who have watched your stream before you had onkbot their points won't be there so another thing i like to use on onkbot is the betting system so we're gonna say we're betting on the 1v1 and then we're going to do the option, I'll say me, flavor, and then we're going to add random. And then you're going to change the payout to whatever you want. I have mine on 10 currently. The min bet amount is, you know, however much, and the max is however much you want them to be able to. And then the bet timer is obviously how long you want the betting to go for. So you'll click start betting, and then, then whenever we want them to stop betting, We'll click stop betting and then you'll let the 1v1 play out see who won and then you'll click pick as winner and then whoever won those points will get their points and off will you know do the rest you can also do the poll system and they're all kind of self-explanatory the next is a mini game where people can gamble points it's kind of weird you can just click check mark change the command if you want but if you want to look into it, you can. You can customize it. The next thing I use for Onkbot is the giveaway system. Honestly, I feel like it's not that great, but I use it when I want to do giveaways for people who have a certain amount of points. What you do is you type what you want the command to be. You say the prize, so I'll say a Steam key, which is a free random game on Steam. Do the timer for however long you want, but you don't have to have a timer if you don't want to. So once you're done with the settings and you want people to enter your giveaway, you do allow entries. And then once the time is up, you're saying stop entries, you can pick a winner, and then it will randomly assign a winner for you. You can also do top five points in your stream if you want. So you would do command top five, and then this is what you have to copy and put in response in return, and it will say who's the top five in your stream. For example, top five. It says who they are. You can make this number higher or lower if you want. You could do top three and then you would have to change this five to a three as well. Whatever you so the next bot that I use is an iBot. And I use a desktop client app and I'll leave the link to the download in the description below. So you're going to want to sign into your main Twitch account, not the bot one. Once you sign into your account, click authorize. And then you're gonna wanna click join channel. Then you're going to want to mod Nightbot. He is now the moderator of this channel. So what I use Nightbot for is mainly song requests and also commands that my mods can use and edit. So once you've connected Nightbot to your channel, you want to go to song request, auto DJ, let me pause this, and I click enable, and that way people can request songs. So I want to go to settings now, and you can change these settings, and you want to change this playlist to channel playlist. Now, if you want, you can import SoundCloud and Spotify playlist. So how to do Spotify, you would do these dots right here on a playlist. Copy playlist link, import, paste, submit. Then you go back and all these songs are now on there. You can still do song requests while this playlist is here. 
Another thing I like to do with the song request and playlist feature in Nightbot is have the song show up on my screen. You're going to want to add, you want to do text, and we'll say Nightbot text. Click OK. Oh. Okay. Then we're going to read from file. We're going to click browse. We're going to go to documents. Nightbot current song. It should be in your documents unless you saved it somewhere else. So you can change the font and everything. I'm just going to click OK. See how big it is. If you want to make the text scroll, you do right click, filters, add effect, scroll. And you can do however fast you want. I think 10 is a pretty good speed, maybe 15. Up to you. You're on the Nightbot app section in the settings of Auto DJ. You can change the text file format. So right now all I have is title and the artist, but you can also do the user who requested the song and also the date. You can also add a bunch of different commands to Nightbot. There is a uptime command the message and then the command will be uptime and you submit. That will tell you how long you've been up for. So that's it with my stream kind of tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this made sense and sorry if it didn't. If you have any questions you can leave them below in the comment section. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and thanks. Bye!